Good morning to you, brothers and sisters. I just want to welcome you today as we are having our Sunday service on social media. And uh, I hope that you are going to enjoy the message from the Word of God. Uh, I always enjoy to hear the Word of God and to just uh, absorb it and to meditate upon it. I, I find it really enriching in my life. And I think it will be the same with you. When you listen to the word of God, uh, something should happen in your life. Okay, let us pray. Come all of you, just as you are, to worship. Whether today you feel strong or weak, full or empty, God welcomes you all into God, in crowd. Come, brothers and sisters, we are a family. Loving Lord, you look us in the eye and remind us that we are already part of your family. Help us to let go of anything that gets in the way that we may hear the word of God with all our hearts and wholeheartedly love all our neighbors, our friends, as we love ourselves. Be with us this morning, Father, as we are sharing the word of God, as we are hearing the word of God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to call Brother Ben to come and do the reading of the word of God from the book of Mark, chapter 3, verses 20 to 35. Good morning, my amazing uh, church family. I uh, hope your week's going well. Um, it's been really well here. I've, I've finished another semester of uni, so I'm pretty uh, pretty happy today. Uh, as, as Johnson mentioned, Mark 3, 20 to 35. Then Jesus entered a house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said, He is out of his mind. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebul, by the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. So Jesus called them over to him and began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house without first tying him up. That then he can plunder the strong man's house. Truly I tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander and utter but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of an eternal sin. And he said this because they were saying, He has an impure spirit. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mothers and brothers? he asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and my sister and mother. And this is the word of the Lord for this week. And uh, yeah, we'll get Johnson back to share his message with us. It's going to be a good one based on the verse. So yeah, come with open ears. God bless. Uh, good morning once again. Uh, I just want to delve into the uh, word of God and uh, sharing the word of God. Um, my theme this morning is what's going on at your house? What's going on at your house? Jesus experienced conflict in his family. In today's text we hear that his family was so upset by what they saw he was doing and heard he was saying that they decided to take charge of him because they thought he was out of his mind. In verse 21, 
Later in our story, we hear that Jesus famed arrived while he was debating with the religious leaders about Satan, the prince of demons. Someone told him that his mother and brothers were there. Jesus responded, my true family members are those who do the will of God. There was tension in the air, not only because of the hot debate with religious leaders, but because of conflict with family members. Jesus knew the argon of family life. There is argon in every family. There is also the possibility of joy, which helps us face the conflicts of life. Don't be surprised when conflict arises, even in the best family. Even the holy family, there was conflict. Remember the Bible story of the fall. The family too is under the case of fall, as described in Genesis chapter 3. That is the beginning point of the Bible story of Mark chapter 3, verse 20 to 35. Conflict and argon in the physical family. So Jesus had conflict with his physical family. Some family members came and tried to take charge of him because they thought he was crazy. They thought he had gone over the age and he had become a religious fanatic. They thought he was crazy because of what he was doing. Preaching about the kingdom of God. Healing and debating with powerful officials. You can feel the agony of conflict as you hear the story of how family members decided among themselves to put him away quietly before he did any more damage to himself and them. In the family conflict, there was misunderstanding, miscommunication, misjudgment, classic symptoms of agony in all families. I think it resonates well with every family. Jesus' family thought he had thrown away security. Jesus had left home and the carpentry business his father Joseph had set up in Nazareth. Jesus' departure directly affected the financial security of his family. He was the oldest son of a dead father. In Jewish culture, as the oldest son, Jesus was responsible for the security of the family. So Jesus had become an itinerant preacher, which had no security for him or for his family. There must have been a lot of gossip in Nazareth when that happened. The family was embarrassed by what appeared to be an act of irresponsible men. So they were concerned about the security issue. They were also concerned about the safety issue. Jesus was on a head-on collusion course with the orthodox religious leaders of his day. Potential conflict with them meant conflict in the family as well. No sensible man would deliberately agitate the powers that were in place. It's like you are fighting the government. The family thought that Jesus could not win in a battle with the priests, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees. So the conflict with the religious leaders rose to fever pitch when the religious leaders accused Jesus of being possessed by Beelzebub, saying he's driving out demons by the prince of demons. So Jesus' family friends thought he was besides himself. So the family was concerned about the safety issue for Jesus and for themselves. So they were concerned about Jesus' teaching, which challenged the values of his society. Jesus' family thought he had thrown away the societal issue. You know, so you, every parent expects you to uphold the things that they've grown up with, they've raised you up with. But now Jesus is now challenging all the status quo in the society. And they said, no, this can't be. It means he's out of his mind. Why don't we just go and grab him out from this thing that he's doing? He had formed his own little society and expected them to change the world. He had called his disciples who were following him. And now they were changing the world. Jesus was taking risks with this new teaching. There were risks would have implications for his family too. He must be crazy, the family members whispered. We had better rescue him before he does any more damage. Let us take him. So according to Mark chapter 3, verse 21 to 20, uh, 20, 21, Jesus only found that he was out of his mind. According to Luke 4, verse 16 to 30, the conflict went from bed to waste when he went to Nazareth. So all the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up and drove him out of the town and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built in order to throw him down the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. That is in Luke chapter 4, verse 16 to 30. If Jesus had conflict and enmity in his family, we should not expect to escape the agony of the physical family. Even our families, we have got this conflict. 
There are misunderstandings and conflicts in every family I know. There is a pain, a sorrow, suffering, and death. Some family members judge others, even hate their own flesh and blood. This is hardship and there is hate in all families. What's going on in your own family? What's going on at your house? I know that there are sisters and brothers who don't see eye to eye. They don't talk to each other. I remember one time when I was in England, I, 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 we were sharing, we were talking about something, and this, um, I was working with this lady who was telling me a story that he, um, he, he, her brother has passed away. And when she was telling her about her brother has passed away, uh, it ended up she ended up indicating that she had not seen her brother for more than 20 years. And they were just one, she was in Sheffield, and the other one was in Southampton. But they've not seen each other for 25 years. I couldn't believe it. And she was telling me that she is really happy that she was going to meet her nieces and, and, and nephews, whom she had never seen. So which means, yes, they knew that she's there, they knew that he's there, but they never come together. You can see what happens in families. So the family is a place where great joy can come, but when sin enters in, the family can be a place of great agony too. Estrangement between spouses, parents and children, brothers and sisters, and other family members can cause so many painful problems that we wonder how we can go on. We don't even know how to go on. Divorces, they cause pain in a lot of children. And I have talked to a lot of children who are in a situation when families are in conflict. And you can hear what they say. I wish if my parents have not divorced me. I wish if my parents were together. I wish if my father has not remarried. So you can see all these things. The children are wishing something which they cannot even take control of. And this is the situation they find themselves in. Some people try to deal with painful family problems by conflict avoidance. Of course, this doesn't work. When problems are stuffed in, in a person, they come out in another way. Like blaming others, which is called projection. Every family knows how it feels when blame is misplaced. Sometimes I've seen people just blame others for no reason. There are certain people who are blamed for everything that happens in the family. Even besides, even there's no person who can witness what they've done. They are always receiving the blame. What we would like to experience when tension comes to the family is conflict resolution. Where all parties experience joy again because of true repentance and joining forgiveness. Because of sin, conflict resolution does not always come in. In some cases, the best way we can hope for is conflict management. How do we manage our conflict? They just move on without solving it. Conflict management comes when one or more family members repent or forgive, but others do not let go of the past. You may say, I'm sorry, but they will never forget what happened. Maybe they will keep on reminding you every day. It could be husband and wife, they are keeping on reminding each other of even what happened 10 years ago, 20 years ago. So you remain a slave in their mind. You remain a slave in the same house because they keep on reminding of what they've been doing. So in this setting, the only option is to face the fact that we cannot change other people. Only ourselves can change. So in this setting, all we can do is change our attitude. Be sure that we do not get dragged down by the tension caused by the sins of others who are fleeing or fighting. Conflict resolution does not come from avoidance or fleeing. When we flee, we take our problems with us. So you don't need to run away. When you run away, you are running away with the problem. You are not leaving the problem. How about fighting? When we fight, sometimes issues get resolved. But much more often, conflicts heighten and misunderstanding multiply when people fight. So isn't there another way to deal with family conflicts? Yes, there it is. It is called facing. Facing means putting your cards on the table, getting the ish out where it can be seen by all, 
and try to solve it. That is what Jesus did when he said that the family of God is more important than the physical family. <laughs> Jesus said, whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. In other words, the faith family is higher than the physical family. I, I, I need acceptance. Last week I was talking about belonging. When you are part of the Christian family, when you are part of the church, you feel you belong to them. You are a stakeholder. You are part of the family. There is nothing that could be done without your knowledge because you are part of the family. Nothing should be done behind the closed doors because you are part of the family. It is only in the faith family that we can face one another and experience conflict resolution or management through forgiveness of sin. When you realize that I've done something wrong, as a Christian, you quickly ask forgiveness. So the forgiveness factor helps us face the power of evil in human relationships and overcome misunderstandings, miscommunication, and misreading of our motives. There was a power of evil at work in Jesus' family. That conflict is experienced in our families too. There is anger in the physical family. But there is possibility of extras there too. There is a possibility of joy in the family. God said it's the solitary families in Psalm 68 verse 6. Because the family can bring great joy as well as great agony. Especially when family members become a family of faith. There is a joy in the family when we celebrate weddings. There is a joy in the family when we celebrate graduation ceremonies. We, we, there is joy in the family when there is success. But I know again that there are some people who are always uncomfortable with the success of others in the family. Who are always not happy. Who are always, even when you invite them for weddings, they don't even come. Even when inviting them for important occasions, they don't even come. It could be birthday days, it could be other things. They don't come. So you can see that there is always conflict in the family. Jesus brought potential resolution to the confrontation with his brothers and sisters by redefining the family. My family members are those who do God's will. He's now saying that. He said, to discover what Jesus meant by God's will, we have to look at another difficult face in our story, which at first seemed to confuse the situation even more. All families have problems. That is the first thing that is obvious in our lesson. If Jesus and his family experience tensions, it ought to take the rest of us off the hook just like a little bit. All families have their headaches and heartaches. Having a family is a challenge. What's going on at your own house? What's going on at your own house? A father fearing an earthquake in the region of his home sent his two boys to stay with a decent friend until the peril was passed. A few weeks later, the father received this letter from his friend. Please take your boys home. Send me the earthquake. Can you see? It's because things are tough. Some of us can sympathize. Children can be challenging. Children of any age. Some of you may be worrying about their children. You may be saying, are we too tough to our children? Are we not tough enough? Do we give in too often? Too seldom? Do we listen to them? Do we understand them? Maybe we nag too much. Are we good parents? We are the answers. Where are the answers in all this? How does one know what to do? What's going on at your house? What's going on at your house? The young people are saying the trouble with grown up is that they think they know everything. These parents, they think they know everything. Is that they don't know anything. Surprise, young people. Parents don't know everything. It's special about raising children. That's what makes it even so difficult. This, that is why so much of family life is a trial and error. Most parents do their best. They can and they pray that it is enough. It is particularly difficult being a family in today's world. Potentially the most sociological significant change in our society may ever be that of a working mom. Keeping families afloat financially has just put new pressures on most families. Our children are being raised on TVs, 
on gadgets because we don't have time for them. Having a family is not easy. All families have problems. If Jesus had a problem in his family, I guess you and I expect to have some problems in ours. I guess we have got problems in our families. The second thing we observe in our text is that Jesus defy, redefined what it means to be a family. A family is not so much defined by its bloodlines, but by the love and respect members have for one another. Mutual commitment is more important than shared genes. Who are my mother and brothers? Jesus asked it. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here I am, my mother and brothers. So Jesus has expanded the concept of family beyond the concept of blood kin. Biology is such a small part of parenting. I hear Jesus saying, My family can't afford to make judgments based on shallow external matters such as family lineage, language, racist boundaries, not even liturgical rubrics. My family is not supposed to be limited like that. Everyone who does what my father wants is a member of my family. That is what he's saying. Our decisions are guided by faith, hope, love, justice, and peace. We want a community which lives as a family. There came a time when cattlemen began fencing their ranches, farms, and plots. They put barbed wires used to mark the boundaries. The wire let everyone know whose land was it and which cattle belonged to which ranch. So the barbed wire kept cattle in and it also kept the stranger and the rustler out. An author suggested that every family goes through a process of putting up barbed wire. We define our boundaries as family unit. But what happens when the barbed wire is taken down and moved inside the house? Restrung down the center of the living room. A house is divided. You find one son, one child is sitting over there. The other one is sitting over there. The mother is sitting over there. The other son is sitting over there. The father is sitting over there. There is no communication, but they are in the same house. Because there are barbed wires which have separated them. This is not to say that any home can ever be free from conflict or controversy. Where authentic human beings live together, there will be honest disagreement. That is natural and it is also healthy. If ever we needed to strengthen the institution of family, is today. It's today. Many forces of evil are pulling the family apart. Ethical relativism, which teaches that there is no absolutes, not even God in increasing popular immorality abounds. Listening or hearing one another seems to be lost at in many homes. You can't say anything. You can't say this is right to your children. Because his truth is what you define it to be. So now they say we are always right in our own thinking. Spouses often seem to be going in opposite directions. Parents and children have had time communicating. Many modern homes are little more than large telephone booths where arrangements are made to live. What's going on at your own house? What's going on at your own house? One household will be divided. Three against two, two against three. What's going on at your own house? It can get worse. Like what Jesus said in Luke 12, verse 15, 53. They will be divided, father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, daughter-in-law against daughter-in-law, against mother-in-law. It seems at first glance that this fire Jesus advocates is all about destruction and division. In fact, one of the primary purposes for fire is to cleanse and purify. Divisions may come, but God's first purpose is sending fire to families to cleanse and purify God's people's lives and relationship. Before looking at the family, goodbyes that may be involved when one person comes to faith and other family members don't, let's look at God's intention of establishing family ties. I've seen that when you become a Christian, not all of your members will support it. Some will be saying bad things about you. Some will be saying words that you will not even want to hear. They can say you are getting crazy because you now you are becoming a, a, a Christian, you've got faith in God. But let me tell you, God created male and female and established marriage and family. God said it is good 
It is good. Family ties are more than human contracts. They are part of God's order. In other words, it is God's intention to give us a preview of fulfillment as members of his eternal family by placing us in a loving family relationship in this life. So the Bible speaks of the relationship between God and human beings in terms of groom and bride in Revelation 21 verse 2. Family ties are good when we see these ties as fostered of the ties we will have in heaven with God and his heavenly host. So God works to establish these human ties to strengthen and purify them. Family ties are strengthened and purified when the members of the family remember the order of creation. The first thing is God first. If every family remembers that they should put God first, all these conflicts will be solved so easily. God first, family second, work third. When this order of creation is followed, families come closer to one another. When this order is upset and something other than God is in first place, there is disharmony and division. Because it's not God first. So first ties are strengthened when family members love and respect God above everything else. And have love and respect for one another. Absolute obedience belongs only to God. But we are called to honor those of us in the Lord. Parents. Children are supposed to honor their parents. Honor your parents. It's biblical. And be honorable to those under us in the Lord. Children. Fathers. Do not provoke your children. But teach them to live and abide in the word of God. Spouses are guided in their relationship by Jesus' ways. Just as I have loved you, love one another. In John 13 verse 34. So the gospel of Jesus is good news. But when someone is logged into their sin, they may see it as bad news. The fire of the gospel is intended to cleanse family relationship. On some occasions, the fire of the gospel is too hot for certain family members to handle. They flee from the family that embraces the gospel. They say goodbye. I won't be part of this family. They cannot handle it. When we talk about prayer, they cannot handle it. When we talk about forgiveness, because what they want is always revenge. What they want is always to retaliate. So this conflict in Jesus' family was eventually resolved. I didn't know, but it's there it was resolved. Just listen. We don't know all the details of the reconciliation, but we read in Acts chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, that the group that met for prayer in the upper room after Jesus' resurrection included Mary and Jesus' brother. So Mary and Jesus' brother were there with the believers in NSC prayer. Somehow they had seen the light and had become followers of the way. Is it really something to hear that the family of Jesus who were seeking to, who were thinking that is out of his mind, now were also followers of the way. Through forgiveness, they joined the faith family. Later, we are told that James, Jesus' brother, became the head of the church and the council in Jerusalem. Can you think about it in Acts chapter 15, verse 18? He was now the leader. James had gone a long way from wanting to put Jesus away to heading up the church. Repentance is what is needed. Repentance through Jesus Christ brings conflict resolution to those who are in the faith family. So to offer forgiveness even to those who do not repent is the will of the Lord. You can say, I'm sorry, even to someone who doesn't need that forgiveness. Forgiveness is the way to follow Jesus' example. That is the will of God spoken for in our story. That is what brings access to the, us to families today. Apparently, because of the crucifixion, resurrection, family goodbyes become family of good ties. When his family realized that Jesus had come back from the dead, they accepted him as Lord and Savior. They no longer just took him just like his, the, our brother. They now regarded him as our Lord and Savior. Accepting Jesus as the resurrected Lord can do that. Believing in the resurrected Lord can work reverse our family of goodbyes and establish new family ties. If ever we need a family ties to be established and strengthened, it's today. If you are a Christian, try by all means to bring others back, to reconcile, to ask forgiveness. 
Faith in the crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ will do that. What's going on at your fair house? What's going on in your family? What's going on? I don't know what's going on in your family. I'm not there. But you know what's going on right now in your family. You know the people you are unable to talk to. You know the people you don't have good relationship with in your family. Please reconcile with everyone. Because you are a Christian. May the good Lord help you. May the good Lord bring something through the power of the Holy Spirit so that you are able to be the conveyor belt to bring this reconciliation with your family members and be able to say, yes, on that day, I managed to do something through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now I can talk to my mother-in-law. Now I can talk to my brother-in-law. Now I can talk to my sister. Now I can talk to my brother. Now I can talk to my father. It's only through when you pray to God and ask God to do what he can do. On our own, we can, can't do it. We can't do it. We can't do it. We can't do it. And refusing to ask forgiveness, I regard it as the unforgivable sin. Refusing to listen to the Bible, I regard it as unforgivable sin. Refusing to the power behind Jesus, I count it as unforgivable sin. Because after saying this, you should jump up and say, Hallelujah, God help me. I want to do it. In my own family, I said, I don't know what is happening in your family, but there is something happening. I don't know what's going on in your family, but there is something happening. May the good Lord help us from now and evermore. Amen. Okay, let us, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. In Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, you show us that there is always room at your table for one more to be forgiven. There is always enough time for everyone to be listened to. There is always enough respect for everyone to be valued. There is always enough truth for everyone to grow and learn. There is always a second chance for those who once turned away. For there in your crowd is always growing and always welcoming. Oh, loving God, you know our fertility and our vulnerability and accept us in, with all our weakness. Forgive us when we see evil and fail to confront it. Forgive us when we allow ourselves to be tied down by our fears. Forgive us when we label and reject others because they are different. Forgive us when we become divided by our own prejudice and compromise. Renew us with the strength to challenge evil, to overcome our fears and to work as one of, for your kingdom of love. Amen. I'm now going to allow you to take your offering as you thank God for what God has done to you. You know, it's, it's always good to remember where you are today because you were somewhere when God called you. And you still remember that God is still working in your life. Maybe every day of your life. For me, every day of my life, I see God's power in my life. I see miracles every day in my life. And I always want to say at the end, thank you, Lord. For all these seven days, God was looking after me. And I just want to say thank you, Lord, for all these seven days. Let us thank God with our offerings. Heavenly Father, we bring our offerings to you. May you bless these offerings, Father, so that everyone, everyone, not anyone, everyone is able to say thank you. Everyone is able to say thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for the love you have shown to us. Without you, we are nothing. Without you, we have we meaningless life. But, Father, we just want to thank you. May you bless our offerings, Father. May you bless every one of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let us...
receive grace. Loving God, you send your son into your world to guide us all up into your kingdom. Be with us as we hear and respond to your call to do the same. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.